didn't get my whistle test presented by accident. I became what I think, I, I think I'm, I'm unique in this, the only uh, DJ uh, in the station's history to become a Radio 1 DJ, a presenter, without ever trying or ever having any ambitions. Well, that wasn't the luckiest element of it. The luckiest element was, well, what was being given a free hand to choose my own music? Um, and the other was when I got a, a message one day, after doing a few shows with another producer, our Elizabeth wrote this message by the telephone and a blue posted note, which I've still got, that says, Stuart Gromley, Radio 1 Executive Fund, you are being sent to Walters. <laughs> there he is, there's the great man. Well, they, both, they were both great men. But to be 25 years old and to be put as a new Radio 1 DJ, which was a shock in itself, to be allocated to these two, the hinge and bracket of, <laughs> of Radio 1, to elderly pantomime dead, it was, was just, the, and I explain why I was in the book. It, it, it was barely disguised that they brought me in as the hit young gunslinger from the whistle test because Peel had got to the unpotastic age of 45. <laughs> and it was a very awkward position for me to be put in, and it also was a very awkward one for John. What they didn't anticipate, the Radio 1 management, was that we were, that we were bonded. And, and a lot of our enthusiasms were shared, and our tastes overlapped, and we were in competition, our programmes became complementary. And what happened was, within the, the chaos of room, little room 318, Walters' office, solidified, really, this radio station within a radio station.